So, name's Di Clegg and my role at uh, Big Data Partnership is Director of Marketing Strategy. Uh, basically, like all startups, it's kind of particularly service oriented startups like Big Data Partnership. You start from really everybody running around doing the, the stuff, doing it, and then all finished a project and another project follows on from that and the word of mouth brings you another. And so you get this organic growth and you get um, to a point where you can't sustain it like that. And then you have to start about some processes, sort of the sales process, the marketing process, how we organize ourselves a little bit more um, formally to get to the next stage. And uh, that's where I joined Big Data Partnership. My previous company was a company called Akunu, which was another London tech startup which exited at the end of last year and had a similar role there. It's all about getting to that next stage, which might be it might be an exit or it might be, you know, full on monster growth. Uh, Akunu was a product company, Big Data Partnerships, a mostly for the moment a, a services company, um, which is unusual. A lot of the startups are all about, oh, great idea, app for the phone and, and off they go. But I think what we've got with Big Data Partnership is something that's really interesting because, you know, you know it, you're in the industry, oh my god, there's a huge skills gap, you know, big data's exploding, there are thousands of new projects, we've not, we, you know, we need everybody to be a data scientist by next year or else the economy is doomed. And so, needless to say, if you've got a bunch of people like we have, who are data scientists, who do know the, their way around really applying big data technologies successfully and repeatedly, then uh, those are skills which are very much in demand. Mm. Uh, and, but we don't like to sort of outsource developments. What we want to do is to enable organizations so we kickstart, we'll train their teams, we'll provide them support ongoing whilst they build the skills and whilst they build deliverables and value for their organization. So uh, our ideal customer is a uh, like CDO of a large organization, so they've got a load of data and the board's screaming at me to do something with it. Um, what am I supposed to do? And we can help them to find, well, maybe you, there are cost savings you could make in some of the use cases you're already doing, maybe on expensive data warehouse that you know, some of those could be offloaded onto a Hadoop cluster. And maybe there's some new sources of data you're not exploiting. You've got machine to machine stuff, you've got uh, social data, but you're not really doing anything with it. Well, we can look, explore some of the use cases there. You can add value to that and then come up with a plan and then say, OK, let's pick that one. Let's prove that we can do something. We can deliver value to the business and then we'll jump in and accelerate that project, prove the point, and hopefully that gets the ball rolling. Because although everybody's, oh my God, we've got to do something about big data, nobody's going to say, oh, good idea. Here's 10 million bucks, go do. <laughs> It's, you know, it's, it's people with skunk works projects coming bubbling up for, oh, we need funding for this, or oh, we've got a great idea here, or oh, we're really clever about this technology. And the, and the guys at the top going, well, yeah, you know, they, everything they're hearing is saying, we need to be doing something, and everything that people are saying is, oh, we're doing stuff. We want to be at that kind of intersection and make it possible for people to add a ton of value and add it quickly. Okay. So in terms of... Um the startup environment in the UK. As somebody who's, who's uh, currently with a startup and has started companies in the past, how do you find the UK, the UK fairs in terms of uh, a, a being a good environment for London? London's great right now. Um, you, yes, the centre of the universe for tech companies is going to be California, so you end up worrying about the US very early, but kind of, you know, it's a connected world, you can deal with that. Uh, in Akunu, we had a sales team in California, you know, one salesperson, one tech salesperson, and then a marketing person after that as, as we grew physically. But if you look at the sorts of business that we're doing, you know, you're selling, but you can, you can deliver them around the world. We can jump on a, a, a hangout and have a, a call, a video call with a customer. We can show them a demo. We can, you know, deliver product over the internet. You don't have that same need to be as close to your customers. 
clearly face to face always helps but you don't actually need to be there to you know, do an awful lot of the, the the relationship building and to do the product delivery what you do need is access to the skills we're not yet to a state where you can distribute the skills to build software that does work in the open source model generally but for a startup which is very very focused on you know getting from A to B very quickly what's great about London is there are a ton of really smart people with those skills and they are within 15 minute bike ride from here you know, that's almost like they demand to be no more than 15 minutes on the bike <laughs> to, uh, to the nearest, uh, you know, to where they're going to work. And in terms of, um, of, of the government, uh, do you think that they're doing uh, enough or are they interfering too much or could they be doing more in your experience? I, kind of, it's, I think it's kind of hard for government to legislate around something as organic and as dynamic as the tech startups. You know, it's, it's relatively straightforward for a startup to build incentive schemes for founders and for employees which are um, tax advantageous for taking the risk, basically. It's, you know, that, that's one of the key levers which you have. If you want somebody to come and you, know, you want really smart people, exceptional people, to really commit to you and your ideas. And indeed, if founders and management teams are going to commit the level, that they, have to, they have to feel that, well, you know, a large part of this is we just love it. <laughs> Couldn't do anything else. But it's kind of quite nice to think that even if it's only a, a measure, it's quite nice you're going to make it, you know, there is a way to make money out of this because you won't. People won't do it at the level of the of commitment that's, that you just kind of you need if there isn't a reason for doing that. And I say, for most of the people who work in these companies, places like TechSpace, you know, money isn't the prime motivator. They wouldn't do it just for the money. They do it because it's really interesting work. They like the people they're working with. They like the environment, you know, like I was talking about this, this East London tech hub um, and really uh, it's just working fine without too much, you, you've seen the regeneration that's going on it's happening because there's a demand for it yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. there's a demand for it because people can live relatively closely, 15 minutes bike road right away in relatively low rent and interesting upcoming neighborhoods yeah. it kind of so how do you find it going from a company that you helped to found to working for somebody else's company how have you found that transition personally <laughs> it is something that I was that I wanted to do actually um, I wanted to take lessons learned for me personally my my background is in, in, in product and product marketing, product management, but I realise that what I kind of think is really interesting is this stage for a startup when you've got beyond the initial frenzy of building your first viable, credible product. You've got beyond the first couple of customers or you've got beyond uh, a small group of uh, you know, customers and you think, great, now what? And I realise that that's almost like when people found the company they almost like that was the end point but it isn't that's actually only the start point you have to turn it into a grown-up organization then and i realize that that's a bit i quite like <laughs> yeah not not i don't like processes you know i think um you know a process is only any value if it helps you to do something better that without the process you do worse yeah something you keep doing well hang on we really ought to kind of you know, rationalise that and then make it cheaper and easier. And and having done that many times, you know, run into all of those brick walls and got the scars to prove it. Then dismantling the brick walls just before the organisation runs into them is something which I get kind of, I personally find satisfying. And having you know, when you've done it a few times, then you get yeah, this is actually a different skill it's not it's not the thing people talk about, about having a great idea or writing a great piece of code 
It's about nurturing it. Yeah. Nurturing the fledgling, if you like. Yeah. And do, in terms of your experience, what sort of advice, how, maybe you've given it to the company you're with now, um, and what sort of advice did you give to, to people starting out on their own for the first time? I, the, the big difficulty, that, if you like, that jump from organic to having a end-to-end -end marketing sales process. I don't care whether it's written down anywhere, but you've got to be doing it, which is, where do we find, what have we got? Who wants it? Why would they want it? Yeah. What else could they do instead of that? Really, really simple. Right, okay, who wants to buy it? Who wants what we've got? What are they doing now to face that problem? Are there competitors for it? Are they doing nothing? You know, so, so you know, what sort of market are we entering here? Are we entering a greenfield one? Well, they're not doing that. Why not? Because they couldn't do it before. We've got this cool technology, like for example, high velocity ingest technology to allow you to take Twitter streams or log files or um, machine to machine data and do something with it instantly. That was what Kunu was doing is, well actually, the competitors were, you know, were people building highly complex systems themselves because you couldn't do that. So, you know, trying to find out what have we got, who wants it, why do they need it, and then that's a cycle because you go back to the, excuse me the development. So you've got this really cool technology and it does this. Oh yeah, that's very brilliant. There's nothing in the world that can do anything like. That. Okay, who needs it? Well, I know you're the marketing guy. Go find people that need it. Uh, no, it's not quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a circle. You won't say, well, okay, well, nope, nobody wants that. How about, but if we tweaked this, we added that, we took that away and we lowered, the, could you do that? Yeah, we could do that. All right, I know who wants that. Mm. Yeah, and that's that cycle of, of what have we got? Why, who wants it? Why is it better? different, cheaper than anything else anybody else has got. Great. Now, once you've got a proposition that stands up, and for a lot of startups that involves a few pivots or at least adjustments on the way, then you need to say, okay, how do we get hold of those people? 